Hello and welcome to our COVID-19 care group where we are working through a short study guide that I put together that hopefully will offer you six simple strategic intentions for staying sane through this global pandemic. This is unprecedented. We certainly have never seen anything like this in our lifetime. Uh, there are so many possibilities of the whys behind this, but I would never dare to even guess at this point because we are in the center of the storm. And it's never wise to really try to assess things until we get some space and have some hindsight and get some wisdom. Right now, we're just trying to be resilient and experience uh, some sense of calm as we move through this storm. It's taken away our personal freedom. It's taken away uh, much of our connection with the outside world. Churches are not meeting. They're not congregating. Everything's virtual and online. Uh, people are working from home and spending, um, goodness gracious, hundreds of hours in front of the camera uh, on Zoom work calls. And moms and dads are being called to homeschool their children, crisis school, whatever you want to call it. We're now in something called pandemic parenting. How much do we choose to discipline in this crazy time, right? There are just, there's a myriad of new normals that we didn't ask to be in. So it is forced upon us. And for me, I think the crux of the matter is that my personal freedoms have been tested perhaps for the first time ever. I live in a very free country. I can do what I want to do. I can go where I want to go. I can worship who I want to worship. I can congregate with those I want to congregate with. I don't have to fear the police showing up at my door. I'm not told how to live my life, basically. There's rules and laws and regulations, of course, but uh, this is just a new normal. You know, when I go to the store and I was told to maybe only go once a week, right? I'm to wear a mask and gloves. And it's just all very encroaches on uh, the power of community and the power of connection, which I definitely um, value <laughs> community for sure in my life. And so I think that there's just a whole lot a whole lot to process and I'm putting, trying to put together some of the best emotional health and spiritual health tools that I'm finding and you can get that through my e-newsletter which I send out on Mondays, sometimes Tuesdays, uh, my blog, Thursdays. Just join the community. Join the Stronger Everyday community. I'm Janelle Reardon, by the way. <laughs> I failed to say that and I am a trauma-informed uh, therapist, professional life coach, author, adjunct professor. I wear a lot of hats. Bottom line, as I'm in the helping profession and I want to do whatever I can to help you, to help you live your God-breathed, remarkable, meaningful, purposeful, peaceful life. That's what I'm here for. So today we're just going to go over the first two simple intentions, and I have based these intentions on COVID, the acronym COVID, C-O-V-I-D. So that's really five intentions, but then I have one to wrap it all up. So COVID, starting with C, first intention that we really want to set into our universe, into our homes, into our hearts, our lives, is to calm the nervous system. And I like to always think in two platitudes. So one is personal, very individual, very personal. And second, it would be professionally or communally. So personal and family. We all have a sphere of influence. We all stand in the center of a sphere of influence. Some of us stand in the center of just five people, some 10, some 50, some 500, some 5,000. But we all have a sphere of influence in which we want to move through that with sanity. And sanity defined is, I'm going to read it. I have a lot of papers in front of me. So 
the ability to think and behave in a normal and rational manner. Sound mental health. I believe that we are triune. We are spirit, soul, and body. Heart, mind, and body, however you want to qualify that. To think and behave in a rational way then is to think clearly, sensibly, and logically. Okay, that, that all takes place in the prefrontal cortex, right here in the front of our brain. And I love the way that Dr. Dan Siegel um, gives this visual. So he's, he's just a brilliant, brilliant researcher and teacher and guide on how to live our life mindfully and to live our life from a place of sound mental health. And so he says, this is our brain, right? This is our integrated brain. This is how we want to move through life with our brain integrated. But sometimes we get disintegrated. We flip our lids. We blow our tops. We lose our minds, right? And when we do, he says we flip our lid. And what that does is it takes us out of this prefrontal cortex here where we can think and behave rationally and reasonably and logically. And it makes us go into our limbic system, which would be our amygdala, which is the fight, flight, freeze, faint part of our brain, two little almonds that are deep inside of our brain. And when we flip our lid, we go into that part of our brain, which makes us reactive. And so we lose sensibility, we lose logic, we, we react, we lose our minds, right? We are not thinking clearly and we're not responding well. So that is what I am all about here in our Stronger Everyday community, online community. We are all about three things, the three full cord of emotional health and wellness of sound mental health, which leads to sound spiritual health which leads to sound physical health because we are integrated people. We are one part of our body affects all parts of our body. So the three full cord that we stand upon, try desperately to, to gain more practice and have it operating 100% of the time in our life is a healthy sense of self. That is, you feel good about yourself, you know your value, worth, and dignity, and you do not need to seek, seek your value, worth, and dignity anywhere else but from inside of you. I receive mine from God above because I see the world through a framework of faith, the Judeo-Christian framework. So God is my father, I see him, and I receive my identity, my God-breathed identity when he breathed his life into me, Genesis 2-7. That when I operate and move and practice my life through a healthy sense of self, then I am secure and I have secure attachment, which means that I can be strong and stable and resilient and handle life's ups and downs and all arounds and global pandemic like now from a place of spiritual resilience or resilience. I am able to bounce back from difficult times with a deeper knowledge of myself and a deeper knowledge of God and there, therefore be able to live my life better. That's what we hope is that tough times, um, we embrace them and we invite them in uh, sometimes as unwelcome visitors and we get to know it and we go, okay, all right, I'm going to receive the lessons that you have for me in this. And that's what I'm hoping that during this global pandemic, I hope that that is happening for you. And I want to be a part of helping you do that. Um, do we like it? No. Do I ever wish those, these things into my life? No. But I do try to embrace difficult times in life and be open uh, in Overcoming Hurtful Words, my latest book. I say, welcome God into the why. It's not, it's okay to ask why God can handle all of our whys. He can handle our anger. He can handle all of our emotions. I just say, welcome him into the why. 
and have a conversation about why is this happening? Why is this happening? So to calm our nerves, oh, let me go through the other two chords. I forgot. Sorry. Second chord is a healthy, um, healthy behavior patterns. And the third chord is healthy communication skills. And I completely and totally believe that when these three chords get stronger and stronger and stronger in our life as we twist them together like a threefold chord, uh, we live a better life. We live a life filled with more peace, more joy, more self-control, more faith, more everything. And more was my word for this year, for 2020. Never when, ever, ever in January did I think a global pandemic was going to come into view. This is 2020, the year of perfect vision, right? And here we are forced home. We're in week six or seven here in Virginia. Nuts. But I believe I can, my vision can become more perfect during this time as I open my eyes and try to see more clearly my own life and then the life of all those in my sphere of influence and even my profession and even my work. It's just clarifying um, if you embrace it. So when we talk about calm the nerves, why did I put that as our first specific intention? And I say create an intention with calm your nerves. Intention should be personal, positive, and present tense. So I created one. I am calm inside and out even when chaos is swirling around me or even when chaos is swirling in my cognition, in my, my thinking. You can create your own intention, personal, first tense, present, first person, present tense. I am capable of calming my nervous system. And I like to add the even when, because there will be even when. You will be tried and tested, most definitely during this pandemic, when you've been at home, probably with your kids, homeschool, all this stuff, right? All the things, all the feels. So... Create an intention that works for you and works for your family. Maybe teach this to your children. Have a family meeting. I've been talking about that so much on the podcast, Speak Healing Words with Janelle. It's on Spotify, iTunes, everywhere. Just go to my website, JanelleRearden.com. But calm the nerves. Okay? Your nervous system is high-wired. High-wired. And times like this, fire it on all cylinders. So I wanted to read a little something uh, that I have been reading in the Mind Body Stress Reset. You know, I study a lot. If you're one of my clients, you know there's new books on my shelf all the time. I'm always trying to, to understand the mind body connection, the heart mind body spirit connection. And so this beautiful book by Rebecca Ledeen. Lydine, maybe, I'm not sure how uh, to say that, is about somatic practices. So somatology, somatic means your body. So when we are in periods of high stress, what can we do inside the mind and the body, the heart and mind, heart-mind connection? What can we do perhaps physically that will help us bring calm to our nervous system? Yeah, so let me make sure I... I chose this as the first intention because I feel very strongly at 60 years old, living into my seventh decade, that if we can understand the power of our nervous system and try to learn how to keep that in homeostasis, as we say in psychology and counseling, at an even keel, we might just say stable living life from stability. I, I didn't know or learn how to do that probably until I don't even want to say. I started my passionate journey towards this at 28. And then at 38, I had a, broke my back. I've had significant markers in my life where it's been like, if I don't learn how to calm down. But I never really understood that it came from attachment theory and all of these other things, which I talk all about on the podcast. So you can get caught up on that if you're thinking, wow, I, I understand that. I never got that either. I really never understood 
because I grew up in an alcoholic home. So stability was, instability was the constant, especially in my nervous system, which I now understand. And so I had really big feelings in my body that I knew nothing, I didn't know what to do with all those big emotions. So when you have big emotions inside a little body, you start to develop coping mechanisms, defenses to stay safe. So I just wanted to read this quick little uh, beautiful explanation in the Mind Body Stress Reset about one thing the nervous system doesn't understand. This is really, it really made a lot of sense to me today. Our stress brain has no time awareness. When our stress brain is activated, which is the amygdala, hippocampus, the limbic system, when our stress brain is activated and we are flipping our lid, then we go into fight, flight, or freeze. As far as the stress brain is concerned, the stress of today and the stress of yesterday are both happening now. Let me say that again. When our stress brain is activated and we are in fight, flight, or freeze, as far as the stress brain is concerned, the stress of today and the stress of yesterday are both happening now. In these instances, our body acts like yesterday's stress is now, today's stress is now, and tomorrow's potential stress is now. And all that activation becomes part of now. Wow. Boy, I could read a lot more from that, but I won't. Just want to make that point clear today. Because a lot of the work that has evolved in my private practice, the Heartlift practice, has been in the realm of trauma. uh, Particularly childhood trauma. And how it doesn't go away. It just gets stored into our implicit memory, which is subconscious. And so much of our personality, how we show up for life, has been formed around how we had to develop coping strategies and defense mechanisms to get through life. Not all of us have have had childhood traumas. So, but they say statistics 55% of the population possesses secure attachment, which is a direct result of living in a home that is safe and your parents are sane and they are not perfect, but they are moving through life with from a better sound mental health condition. And so having had an alcoholic father in my home just, you know, caused a lot of instability, which then caused me to have to develop a lot of strategies to be safe and secure. And so we want so, so much to understand how important it is that we do not let these certain defenses and coping mechanisms continue in our life. And eventually, I firmly believe, especially as a follower of God and a follower of his ways, that he loves me so much. He doesn't want me to live my life through that way. And so he will graciously cause things to happen in my life that will help me come home to my true essence. So Our true self, I call our essence, our healthy sense of self, is who God breathed his life into me to be. Personality is how I show up for life. It's what I have had to put on in my life to survive. And for me, as an example, would have been the applause of man. I was a performer, started twirling, swirling, dancing my way through life uh, very young. On stage and on stage I found my identity I feel like the stage became a foster parent to me and when I performed and people clapped and they told me I was wonderful 
my whole identity became based in applause, approval, and I was addicted to man telling me that I had value, worth, and dignity. I didn't know that in and of myself. So we all have different ways that we move through the world, and that was the way that I did until, you know, probably a few years ago. And uh, I have done a lot of heart work, and so I feel very secure. I know my value, worth, and dignity, and I now can just express myself and uh, my gifts and my talents and give them to the world without needing the world to applaud me. I applaud myself. I'm proud of the work that I do, and if it, it gets an increase of influence, and that's great. That's great. It doesn't make me feel any better about myself. It doesn't make me feel any worse about myself. I now can just express the gifts and talents and the passions of my life. And I have a deep sense of contentment and um, fulfillment and meaning that I'm doing what I have been created to do. You don't have to tell me that I'm doing a great job, although I like it. So you can go ahead and tell me that because we all like affirmation. Affirmation is a part of what uh, God designed us to to encourage one another and to tell one another and to tell one another that, you know, you're rocking it. You're doing a great job. I'm so proud of you using your gifts and talents to make the world a better place. So calming the nerves, high, high priority, especially during a global pandemic. How do we do that? How do we do that? One very simple way. Let me grab this book back because I love this um, exercise. This would encompass why it's so important to practice presence, to be in the now, to live in today. Jesus said it this way, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has enough trouble of its own. Be present, live right now, right now, right in this, this moment, whatever your hand is finding to do, whether you are cooking the 800th meal of this global pandemic from scratch, whether you are frustrated at trying to teach a child math that is very unlike what you learned. I get all of that. I homeschooled for 14 years. I raised three kids. I get it. But I wish someone had called back to me and said, Janelle, practice presence. Be here now, right here. What you're doing today is so critically important. Enjoy it. Savor it. Be present in all of your senses. So in in this particular chapter, seeing and sensing the here and now, she offers this wonderful presence exercise. Many little seeing and sensing breaks are great for our nervous system. So take a nice long look around. Gentle, and slow. No rush. A couple decades ago, very wise doctor, he had his pulse on his finger on the pulse of my life. And he said, I want you to stop all leadership positions. I want you to go home for six months with, and just, I had one child at that time. Love that little girl. Take care of your house. Do things you've never given yourself permission to do. And sit in a chair for 15 minutes and do nothing. I want you to start writing in your journal. What a wise man. I think he was an angel. Hardest six months of my life. Didn't last very long after that six months because I went right back to old feedback loops and habits. But over the years and over the years and over the years, I've come back to him and thought of him. And now I feel like I finally, at 60, have this practice going on. And I don't want you to wait that long. So we want to take a nice long look around, gentle and slow, no rush. He told me, I don't want you to do power walks. I want you to saunter. I want you to saunter and see. Let your eyes find something they enjoy looking at. Maybe something in the room, maybe something outside of it. So as I sit here in my breathing room, I call it my counseling room, Right outside of my window, I have planted a bird feeder and the beautiful goldfinches that make me so happy just come and and alight upon it all day long. Yesterday evening, a beautiful female cardinal came and just sat there and just nibbled and 
I just took it all in. And look, it just, it makes me smile to think about it. And those little flashes of gold that the goldfinches bring to me, I call them lessons in gold, make me so happy. So what makes you happy? When's the last time? Oh, wow, I'm getting emotional here. When's the last time you just stopped and looked at something beautiful that brings you joy? For my husband, it's the ninth tee of a golf course. It's the second tee. It's a putting green. You know, we'll take a walk. We live um, in a golf community. And so we'll take a walk and he just has to stop. Let me watch this man. Let me watch this woman. Let me see how, you know, it's just so lovely. I'm like, you're so cute. It just brings him joy. Uh, Is there a view? that brings you joy. Maybe it's not outside. Maybe you live in an apartment building and maybe you're not allowed to go outside right now. I love the story of Billy Graham's wife, Ruth Bell Graham. When they first were married and getting started in ministry, they were so pop. They had no money and they had a tiny, tiny little apartment and she put up a beautiful red scarf and pretended it was a fireplace. Uh, She did. It's a true story. Is there a shaft of light that's coming in that's catching your attention? It is for me right now. I have a beautiful lantern that sits on the floor and the the light, the sun comes in about this time in the day and it just puts a beautiful shadow on the floor. Something on a wall, perhaps even just a direction, looking down to the right or up to the left, for example, might feel good for whatever reason. Once you find that thing, view or direction to rest your eyes upon, Just relax your gaze there. Now, when I sit in this chair, I'm usually writing. This is my writing spot, my working spot, my study spot. That's why I put the bird feeder there. And there's beautiful lavender plants out there as well. And I can recognize if I've been in deep work or I've been working um, for a while that I might be like this when I sit back and look at the bird feeder and I have to consciously go, oh, wow, lower your shoulders, Janelle. Relax your neck. Take a breath. Okay, so right now I'm going to show you a special breath that you can do that will relax. It'll go right into the right side of your brain and it will relax your sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight, flight, or freeze. And it will bring you into your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest, which is where we want to live more of our life from. So just put a finger, any finger on the right side of your nose. Close your eyes and you're just going to breathe in that left nostril. do that a good five times good five times so relax your gaze there maybe even your focus softens and blurs a bit that's just fine too no need to focus let your eyes decide how they want to see next notice your body notice your body what happens in your body as you rest your gaze on something pleasing you just saw that witnessed when I was gazing upon my bird feeder I I just start to smile because it really does, and I got emotional because it makes me be in the now. It makes me very present. I forget about any and all worries and concerns. They went away because I focused my mind on this beautiful yellow golden bird and the simplicity of him just gathering a few bites of thistle and the breeze is blowing on the lavender and the trees and it's just a very pretty little window that I've picture have a picture of and get to look out I'm very blessed what happens in your breathing when you rest your gaze and sense your body allow your breath to join in the seeing and sensing the breath the prana the breath of life the zeo life is what god gave us to calm our nervous system 
And when I do that, I relax and my shoulders relax. And the more in tune, the more time I give to sensing and seeing, breathing, the more attuned I come to my body and the more relaxed I get. Now just take the experience in. Easy does it. Conclude whenever you feel done. For those of us who might self-identify as high worriers or as prone to extreme stress, the world around us can at times appear to be an unwelcome or overwhelming place. When you are stressed, scared, or triggered, your thoughts can interrupt your seeing and convince your eyes of things that aren't really there. This can all happen at lightning speed as the whole body-mind system revs up in response to stress activation. With brain as the seer, we're stuck unconsciously creating a point of view about the environment and then automatically scanning our surroundings for evidence that validates that point of view, entering right back into a negative feedback loop. So that's why it's so critical. I'm going to stop there because I really wanted to keep this to 30 minutes. So we're only going to go over intention one, which is calm the nerves. And then I'll let you practice these things and we'll go on into intention two. So I hope that you've gained some sense of how important it is to calm your nervous system. This was a primer. It was just the scratching of the surface to understand, to be aware how critical it is that you understand that the nervous system, it's, the, it's what leads us, it's what guides us, it what, it's what moves us through our day. And we don't talk about it enough. We don't practice positive exercises that help keep our nervous system at that beautiful homeostasis, that beautiful stable place where we can actually move through life from a place of peace and a place of calm. Please visit the podcast, my blog, my website. There are so many other resources that will give you more information on how to calm your nervous system. And I do want to end with a beautiful psalm, a psalm written by um, a beautiful choir director in the Psalms. This psalm was not written by David. Um, And it it even says in my version of the Bible, it is to be sung by soprano voices, which is what I have. I have a soprano voice. So I'm going to do my justice to read it in my soprano voice. And it's Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. We will not fear when global pandemics like COVID-19 show up. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed from the very break of day. God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. Hmm. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still. Be still, my dear. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Be still and know that God is with you. Until next time, remember, you have value, worth, and dignity. And you can, you are capable of remaining calm in the midst of a global pandemic. I have faith in you. I believe in you.